Varroa mites represent one of the most severe modern threats to beekeepers and the apiculture industry. These mites were first seen in the United States in the late 1980s and have spread throughout the U.S. and Canada. Beekeepers should assume they have mites in their colonies and if they plan to treat, have a plan prepared in advance to control these populations. Timing of treatments usually occurs a month before a honey flow and or right after the last honey of the year is harvested. Currently, many of the products beekeepers use to treat colonies for Varroa are not efficacious or resistance to the pesticide has built up. Therefore, it is best for beekeepers to always survey mite levels in colonies before they treat and then sometime after they treat. If mite levels have not been sufficiently reduced, the beekeeper should try another treatment. In this video, we will demonstrate several ways mite populations in a colony can be quantified. The state apiarist, Department of Agriculture, or university apiculture specialist should be contacted for the latest Varroa control options. Varroa mites can usually be visually observed on bees, but one cannot assume that if you do not see mites, the colony is mite free. The mites have eight legs, are approximately the size of a sesame seed with an oval shape and are reddish brown in color. The mites are external parasites and can often be seen attached to the back of a bee near the base of the wings between the head and the thorax and sometimes on the abdomen when colonies are heavily infested. Mites on adult bees are only a small portion of the total mite population. In colonies with brood, it can be assumed that six to eight mites are laying eggs on pupae under the cap for every mite seen on an adult bee. Mites can spread easily to other bees within the hive, as well as to other hives when infested hives are robbed or infested bees move or drift between colonies. Beekeepers should always look for signs of mite infestations when working with their hives to gauge the seriousness of the infestation. These signs of infestation can often be seen during colony inspections once a beekeeper knows what to look for. While opening the hive and splitting the brood chamber apart, some brood that was developing in the burr comb between the hive boxes may be exposed. Look at this brood carefully as the mites on the white developing pupae are easy to see. Because Varroa prefer drone brood, and drone brood is often what is built between stack supers, high mite levels here are common. As a visual inspection of frames is performed, examine the bees on these frames to see if Varroa are attached to any bees. If mites are seen, it is likely that the hive is heavily infested. Now inspect for worker or drone bees with deformed wings. These malformed bees may be crawling on the frames, near the hive entrance, or possibly on the ground in front of the hive. Deformed wings are usually a sign of heavy infestation caused by an increase of virus incidences enhanced by Varroa mites and it is likely that the hive will die within the next few months. The next type of visual Varroa detection involves sampling the cat brood in a hive. If there is cat drone brood on any frames, sampling this area will give a good indicator of Varroa incidence. As mentioned, more than two-thirds of the mites in a colony can be in cat brood cells and not visually detectable without opening the brood cells. If there is drone brood on a frame, look there first by using an uncapping fork, which is commonly called a capping scratcher, tweezers, and some type of magnification that permits closer examination of brood. Find an area of cat drone brood and, using the prongs of an uncapping fork, slide it along the comb surface and into the drone cappings. Pry the fork upward and remove the pupae. Pull the pupae out with the tweezers and examine the bodies and the interior of the cells under magnification for mites. The following two detection methods can also be used for sampling as the Varroa mites are captured in such a way that a subsample from the hive can be used to determine an approximate calculation of all the mites. Lightweight, white sticky boards are available commercially or can be made from white cardboard or white corrugated plastic. 
Homemade boards should be cut to cover most of the hive's bottom surface, which is an area of approximately 16 by 12 inches. The top surface of the board should be covered with a thin layer of cooking oil spray or Vaseline. A wire mesh, such as number 8 hardware cloth, is attached with a rubber spacer, cardboard, or anything that allows the board edges to keep the bees separate from the mites or from becoming trapped on the sticky board. If the board was used in a previous mite count, make sure to clean the board before using it again to prevent mite transfer. Place the screen sticky board between the high floor and the brood frames. When the bees groom themselves, the mites will become dislodged and will fall through the mesh screen and stick to the tacky white board beneath. After a three-day drop period, the board should be removed, the mites counted, and a one-day average computed. For the powdered sugar roll sampling method, a one-half measuring cup, a plastic bin, a wide mouth jar fitted with a one-eighth wire mesh screen lid, a white bowl, and approximately two tablespoons of powdered sugar are needed. Collect a lightly packed one-half cup of bees, approximately 320 of them, from a frame of uncapped brood by tapping it lightly on the plastic bin and scooping them up with the one-half measuring cup. It is important to collect from a frame of uncapped brood as these are younger bees and more likely to be parasitized by mites. Quickly place the bees into a wide mouth jar and tighten down the lid with the wire mesh screen. Place two heaping tablespoons of powdered sugar through the screen. More may be needed if there is high humidity. Shake the jar from side to side to distribute the sugar on all of the bees. Continue shaking for about one minute, well after all the bees are thoroughly covered. Tip the jar over the bowl and pour the powdered sugar with the dislodged mites into the white bowl with a thin layer of water. Continue shaking gently until no more sugar comes out and count the mites floating on the water. Return the bees to the hive where they will groom themselves to clean off the powdered sugar. Again, after you have counted the number of mites from either the sticky board or sugar roll test, Contact or refer to your state apiarist, Department of Agriculture, or University Apiculture Specialist for the latest information for control options.